p.m. So uh, with that, the Beshire City Council Joint Regular Committee meeting uh, for Thursday, November 21st will be called to order. Uh, members present are Andrew Schock, Doug Foat, Monica Sack, Bruce Truca, Mark McKeever, myself, and Dan Wireball. Uh, call to order at 6 p.m. <coughs> Public participation, anybody wishing to address uh, the committees, uh, encouraged to step to the podium and give us your name and address and speak. Yeah. Um, it, are you here about a specific? Hey, what, the rezoning request. We will uh, wait and when we get to that committee, we'll uh, speak to, uh, directly to that. Uh, so seeing no other public participation, we'll move on to the order of committee business. Number two, start with your second one, please. Which one? Public participation. Liquor license. I haven't even got that far yet. Oh, you want to start with number two first? Yes. Okay. Order of committee business is the health and safety committee meeting at 6.01 p.m. And we're going to start with topic number two at special request. Uh, the liquor license renewals. And uh, in your packet, you have the letter, uh, which Todd read the first three paragraphs. I'll do the same tonight. Uh, addressed to the clerk of the Sire City Council, dear clerk of legislative authority. This is notice that all permits to sell alcoholic beverages in your political subdivision will expire on February 1, 2020. In order to maintain permit privileges, every permit holder must file a renewal application. Ohio Revised Code Section 4303.271B provides the legislative authority with the right to object to the renewal of a permit and to request a hearing. The hearing may be held in the county seat of the county in which the permit premises is located if that request is made in writing. This will be your only opportunity to object to the renewal of a liquor permit premises, which might be a problem in your community. Um, do you need me to read that next paragraph, or is that? I think that's sufficient. Okay. So, uh, Todd, I believe it was you that said that you'd already checked with the police chief and he had no uh, problem areas, and I think I would ask Mr. Ratliff the same question. Uh, are there any that you're aware of that uh, are cause for concern? There is. Um, it's been an ongoing issue. Um, I don't think it, um, it's not an issue that impacts the Liquor Control Board or their decisions. So it's not one of the items that is covered by um, you know, the list of, of things that they give us to consider. But there are two businesses in town that I do have, you know, from a prosecutorial standpoint, concerns with. But again, it doesn't impact the. Uh, so you don't see a need to request a hearing for them? As much as I'd like to it just be mean, um, no, okay. definitely not. And, you know, it's it's an ongoing issue with uh, uh, instruments of drug abuse, um, fake urine. Uh, how much I know? Instruments of drug abuse, fake urine, drug paraphernalia, uh, those sorts of things that are available in our community um, and are, are problematic. And you know, when you mix the, the two things together, I, I think I find that to be problematic. The liquor control board does not. But. Any concerns from committee members, Albany? There's not been any uh, written complaints or anything. None that I've been made about oh, right. okay. Do we have to, uh, is this one we have to reply to? You yeah. have to reply to? If we have no issues, we have, that's the yeah. answer. Okay, okay, so you so still need to take a vote that there's no, there's no issue. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then go to full council. So then I would entertain a motion to not request a hearing to send this on to full council for saying so. Second. All right, first and second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 That motion passes. Back to item number one, the AEP chart. Back no? to number three. Oh. You didn't tell me that. <laughs> Are we buying time for somebody? We are. <laughs> now that they caught on, thanks. Uh, Jeff, do you have a phone If you don't, I do. Okay. Oh, she, hold on a minute. She, we spoke earlier today. And she asked if she needed to be here, and I said only if she felt the need, and I said that we'd all talk to her, and, and, and I felt I had sufficient information. Yeah, we've got a phone number right so here. So she, she was not planning on coming. She was not no. planning on coming. On. No. That was, I forgot I did have that conversation with her earlier. Okay. Now, do you want me to go back to number one? Your choice. I'm going to go back to number one. <laughs> <laughs> the AEP charging station. Um, and you have various information in your packet here. Um, the first is an email exchange between Aaron Stein from the partnership and uh, 
since the uh, president uh, gives the breakdown of the location, the feasibility study. What we're looking at here is in city parking lot number six, um, having a, a charging station. I went and spoke with the owners of the two boutiques, the one that's moving into Chuck Miller's old place, which uh, would be the uh, To Begin Again, and she's changed the name now, I can't remember her new name, but I went and spoke with her. She was 100% absolutely in favor of, of this. Um, I went and spoke with Leslie Hill at the uh, Style. Divine Style. Divine Style, thanks. I was going to get there in a minute. Um, she is also in favor of it. Uh, somebody told me they spoke with somebody at Angles. And I don't remember who that was. That you yeah. They were less favorable, but not uh, so it seems like of the people that would be impacted the most by that, uh, there was no uh, objection and some excitement to it. So we did actually also send, uh, give all the council members, the, it's attached here again, the uh, information of uh, uh, when they did the uh, census for parking spots and things that were available. You have all that information and, and you see how they eliminated uh, different places because of either a uh, lack of accessibility to a telephone pole or it's not city property or the adjacent property belongs to somebody else it doesn't belong to, to the city so you can see how they narrowed it down to uh, that place there in uh, uh, the picking uh, parking lot when Aaron was here and spoke two weeks ago uh, I watched the video replay and I know she mentioned that there are apps and things and so I downloaded a couple of them and uh, we show up on some but not others there are two they're not charging stations, but they're two charging locations that are public here in town. One at the Quality Inn and one at the Holiday Inn. What they simply are is a, a one to outlet that, uh, that they make available to you in the parking lot there. Uh, so those do show up on the one app. Um, the closest I could find ones, units that are similar to what's being proposed is there are uh, 10 of them at the Walmart over in uh, Mansfield, over on the other side of Mansfield, not Ontario. Uh, there's about 10 or 12 of them over in uh, I-71 and 61 in Mount Gilead, as well as I-71 and 95. Both of those locations have uh, either 10 or 12 of them. So, you know, one of the things that I, when I spoke with the boutique owners, at least they, uh, they said, you know, these are people typically that are going to be from out of town. If, you're, if you need to charge it, you live here, you're going home to charge it. So these are people who are looking to attract that are going through on 4 or going through on 30 that, to say, hey, I'm, I'm low on a charge. And, I went on the app, you could go in and read, people can comment, you know, check in, I almost like Facebook, they could check in and comment. People that use the ones here in town, you know, they're, they're mentioning as well. I was on my way to Lake Erie and realized that I left home without a full charge, and thank goodness I found a place. So I mean, there are people that are gonna benefit from it. Um, I don't know that it's gonna be our own residents, it's gonna be a, a way to get people to stop here when they're heading through, is what it amounts to. I don't know if there's any questions or other discussion from the committee. I think the other thing is, is to, to re-mention again that um, they had applied for the um, for, a, for a grant to do this, and so it, it, no charge to the city for this. It's a, I think, a $94,000 grant. 94000 uh, I, I spoke with Aaron a couple times just to get better informed. They, the partnership will own the unit. Um, AEP doesn't retain ownership over the grant allows the partnership to purchase the unit. They will be paying, the, the partnership, will be paying the monthly electric bill on it. Um, when you as the user slide your credit card in to pay for a charge, that money goes to the partnership. Now, the money they're going to make on that is probably never going to amount to what their minimum electric bill is per month. Um, she did say that if it ever comes to a point where they're bringing in more money than they're you know, paying out for the utilities that they would consider funneling that back to the city in some way, shape, or form. So they're not looking at this as a, uh, as a money maker for them, they're looking at it as a way to enhance the, the area and get more people to come in and stop. And then we also still do have a few other issues that we need to uh, talk about uh, as far as the parking space itself is concerned and about any other vehicles being in there. That we have to change any of our uh, ordinances about that. Well. Yes, traffic commission would do that though. Okay. Um, if we want to designate uh, parking as parking for EV vehicles only, or uh, charging parking while charging only, um, or two hour limit, or I don't know how long it takes to charge a car, but, um, we would pass those to traffic commission and we post signs and 
we need to include that in our ordinance with the town board. The strike commission sort of has to start. Okay, so we'll, we'll uh, undoubtedly have some signage. Now we've got time to, yeah. to review all that, and all that can be brought back to council so you can see exactly what's going to be going on going in there. Yeah, okay. the research I did on those apps, Rob, did say that they, they sell the charge by the quarter hour. So you can buy 15 minute increments. So it looks like you can charge a vehicle fully within an hour. So parking. Yeah. Um, unless there's any other discussion or questions, I'd entertain a motion to allow the uh, partnership to uh, proceed with their grant and have the AP charging station installed. And we need legislation. Yeah, to, to, yeah, to request yeah. legislation. So good. Second. Okay. Got a first and second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same. No motion passes. Now we're going to go to number three since it's going on. <laughs> uh, codified ordinance 703 and 711, home solicitation, sales peppers, and solicitors. Well, all this was requested Tuesday night uh, by Mr. Wireball. Um, did you want to preface? Again, the, the issue that you had with your oh no, no I, I just well I guess to review uh, uh, probably a month ago my mom called me and, and said there's this guy with me that signed this for ADP and a gentleman came and, and said oh you've got a new smart meter which we know everyone in town is getting one so so and apparently they know that too so yeah he uh, you are now. You get all these free light bulbs and this and energy efficient things, you know, and uh, it's yours. All you have to do is, uh, you know. So basically, he was, uh, I guess, I guess he was lying because I think, which I, I never really looked into because she canceled it as soon as he left, but because he did give her a phone number to cancel it. But I'm assuming that he uh, had her change her rate. And uh, because she was getting all this, you know, signed this, and, and, and he stood there, and as she called to do this, and prompted her what to say, and actually the lady on the phone actually said, uh, is there anyone there telling you to say this stuff? And he said, you know, say no, you know. And she, so he forced her to lie, and... Uh, so, you know, it was just pretty ugly all together. So, uh, uh, so as soon as he left, well, and she called me, I said, Mom, if you don't want to do it, tell him, tell him to leave. And I thought it was over, you know, and at that point. And then she she called back, or I called her back. And, yeah, I called her back. I said, is he still there? Uh-huh. Like, she was like, I said, well, I'll make a call. So I called down the police department and said, can you send someone out there? I think there's someone out you know, soliciting without. I mean, I didn't feel she was in danger or anything like that, but, but uh, just, just being annoyed. Just being annoyed. And I, and I guess the lady across the street said, you know, he must have hit her house too. And my mom had talked to her and said, all you got to do is call and cancel it, you know. And, and I believe she did too. But so I don't know. That was a situation recently that, that popped up for me personally. And you know, I'm sure there's other people that have went through that. But, they come in and, and I guess don't aren't really honest. So, so I, I was going to just direct a question to the law director of is there anything that you see in there that we would uh, potentially look at with the ordinance to beef it up or yeah. make a change somehow? Yeah, we, we have two ordinances that cover our, our in-home solicitations and, and I think you have copies of both of them. Um, section. 703 and um, 711. Um, 711 or 703 has the the right of cancellation, um, and this this goes along goes along with the uh, uh, Federal Trade Commission regulation as well. In this cooling off period, um, I think ours says.
Here's your car, but you don't have insurance. And I'm not saying we should maybe just make them show proof that they have just yeah, flash the ID card. We don't have to look into, you know, because we're not doing that anyways, but at least show the proof. You're going to show your license, show your ID card. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I can't disagree that, with that. Yeah. Uh, really doesn't make sense. <laughs> it, it, it isn't even going to help because they will get, if they have the accident and BMB shows, they will revoke your license. You're done. I mean, it'll be submitted to the court, whether we show proof or not. I mean, it, it happens. Right. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have the insurance at the time of the accident and you don't take care of the situation, the BMB will revoke your license and your tags to your vehicle immediately. They, they'll they send you a thing and, you're, and you have to go to court. Am I right? You have to go to court and you have to pay the fines and the I think judge they start they, not very lenient on that either. I think what Dan's looking at though is to prevent that from happening. It, it, that, that won't prevent it. If we at least see the insurance ID card, we release ourselves from the fact that we did the best that we could to make sure they were, I get what he's saying. I, I get what he's saying, but it's bear any liability. No, we don't we bear any liability, liability, but I think it's doing your due diligence that, you know, if you're going to be able to take your vehicle, you should show proof of insurance that it's insured before you take it. Don't hire me. I mean, I mean, you don't take it from the car lot before you show proof of insurance. That depends on the car lot. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I've never had to show proof of insurance when I bought my vehicles. They never asked. That's a stupid salesman then. <laughs> I mean, if they ever was voting on it as is, then maybe. Yeah, well, consider this. Yeah. yeah. So I do have a motion to accept as presented, and I have a second, and we've had discussion. Uh, so all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same. All right, that motion also carries, requesting legislation. <coughs> Any other matters <coughs> come before the Public Safety Committee? I was just bringing it up again. I know we've talked about it numerous times. And I don't know if we've got anything to look at specifically about the noise ordinance. We still have had the, the issue where we had uh, essentially the noise ordinance didn't hold up in court. So um, just want to make sure that we get something that, something in front of us to look at here relatively soon. <laughs> get a noise ordinance on the books that will. We have the, yeah, I mean, it, it's still on there. We've got several uh, versions that we've tendered. So, I mean, it's really just a matter of having a committee meeting and going through the any numbers? I went and took and I've got a list. I, I would like to get some more. I want to get, and I haven't had the time to get, you know, around the outside of a, a music playing establishment and get those. I mean, it, it, mainly it's been traffic and in, um, industry. And you know, when I looked at the one from Delaware, Ohio, I believe that had 75 as their upper limit. You can stand right out here on the street and as you're getting in your car, a semi going by is, is well over 75. And I know you can put a time frame into that as well. You have to have a constant, you know, noise emitting for X amount of minutes or, or X amount of hours. Uh, but I was baffled, you know, as you sit here in a room like this, how much noise there truly is when nobody's speaking. And, uh, I should download the app on my phone. I think it was, I did it the other day when I was sitting here. It was about 35 decibels. 38 yeah. of just the ambient noise in the room. So, I mean, it's not zero yeah. when you think it is. So, it's a tricky, tricky formula to figure out. But, you know, when I met, we talked about the situation. I want to find a way that, that you know, encompasses all of that. I don't know if there is a way. But, uh, so, would you, would you want to try to, I don't know. I mean, if we need to have a committee meeting, you know, have a lengthier discussion or look at different potential sample ordinances, I know we've you know, had a few that we've looked at and not really concluded on. One of them being the, you know, you have some as many to, that you felt were needing and, and the right one for us. Quite frankly, I like the, the reasonable standard, and the, the courts don't. The, our court doesn't. Um, <laughs> so, um, it, you know, because I think that that just gives you off strong on, on, on the ground, that, that, that kind of discretion. But uh, that, the one that we have from, Del I think it's, it's not Delaware, it's like Delaware Township. Yes, it's outside of Delaware. Yeah. Um, 
that seemed to be the most comprehensive. Now the question is, because that's not in a center city, that's more of a suburban type thing, um, whether those numbers are more appropriate for us. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to go out and do some more research. I had done a little, and I haven't done as much as I would like to. Um, and the other issue that I, I spoke with the police chief about, he never really got back to me on an answer, but is it gonna be like a radar or breathalyzer? Is it where we have to buy a little more expensive equipment and have a calibrated X number of, you know, every so often for that to stand up? And that's a whole other matter that, you know, at some point it's gonna become cost prohibitive to enforce if we've gotta keep buying new stuff and paying to have it tested. The, the reliability of those things will, will always be something that's Challenge. contestable and, 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 and challenged. Um, that's why, but that's why, you know, if you're limited to 75, you're not going to be on there charging somebody with 76, 78. Right. You know? You're well, that's why, you know, when I, I bought the first unit, I, I got it out and I, I turned it on and it was a room like this, you know, where there's a little bit of ambient noise between that. 3 and 35, but those things broke. So I downloaded the app on my phone and they're right there. Not broke, you know. So it is. I think that's going to be the trickiest problem that we're going to have to come up with the number. But you know, I, I agree with Andy. I think we're going to look at it. We need to. When did you start taking readings? During the summer. Okay. No, I'm just that's why I was yeah, asking because I you know and, and I feel like it should be a year-round thing that you get readings so you can see what it's going to be yeah. from summer to I spring. I wanted to make it at the old thirty when they had a band playing and hear what it sounded like, you know, from Bruce's porch, you know, and things like that. Where how far away is is it giving you X amount of readings? And those are the things that I just haven't had the time to do that I'd like to try to do. Of course, they're not having outdoor music too many places. <laughs> well, this you time think about summertime. What I mean. You live close enough on Plymouth Street to the shooting range, and you may hear them out there cracking off at the trap shooting. Well, yeah, and, and I know the wind plays trains, a lot of yeah. trains are one, you know, a lot of but the factory noise, tractor poles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can Car see Car show. Outdoors <laughs> 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 festival. I like that push that car up and down the street on Sadowski. Yeah, yeah, I can hear the high school marching band, you know, yep. from my house. I can hear parents cheering at Little League games from my house. So, so yeah, noise does travel. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get where you're at with it, and I think we need to take the next step and, and sit down and look at it and, and, and pull that back out and determine, I, I think that the huge, or the, the biggest key for us can be to decide what number is, is an appropriate number. Yeah, if you can pull that back in, if you're going to have a special meeting, we can always do a couple of items at the meeting. Mm -hmm. so, as well. Yeah. I mean, and if we're going to have a special, like you said, have a special yeah. meeting, we talk about both of them. And you have the chief there anyways, too, so. So I will tell you, though, any of you, you know, it was a free app. You know, download it, make some notes of places as you go, and, and, and have some more data for us to share with each other when we get together. It'd be great. Anything else to come before health and safety? If not, uh, we'll recess at 6:33 p.m. All right. I'll call planning. Yeah. To order at 6:33. Landon. I'm going to call you up there. Let's get this on the road. Yes, sir. <laughs> My name is Linda Dell. I'm the zoning administrator for the city of Bucyrus. Um, the request that the planning committee has before them tonight is a zoning reclassification for Stowaway Inc. Uh, private storage units out at 815 East Mansfield Street. Uh, I think you have my packet there that I gave to Todd to share with you. You can see the general area of the request. Um, it's, it's located out there behind the car wash. Um, the proposed changes that are going to take place would be for 815 Mansfield Street itself, which is the address for Stowaway, and a portion, the southwest corner, they're looking to purchase from the neighboring property to the east, 825 East Mansfield Street. Um, which is Ohio Specialty. Um, they're looking to purchase that southwest portion of their lot that actually is directly south of their current lot that they have, and basically just kind of, you can see there, double what they what they have currently to um, accommodate new development of the current use they have there, of uh, uh, what's referred to in our code as public mini warehouses. Um, the current zoning there you have, and if you kind of you know reference it next to the next page, the proposed zoning change, 
you can see exactly uh, what the chain would encompass. Um, the LIC does abut directly to the proposed portion of the lot that they're going to be purchasing. Um, so we can simply expand that LIC district to um, accommodate their new use. Um, again, the reason that, that has to be accomplished is this current use is a grandfathered use, a legal non-conforming use. Um, public many warehouses, as they're referred to in our code, are only um, permitted in the LIC district. These have been there since 88. So they, they predate our code by some time. Um, so the social change would allow them to build a new development to continue with the existing use at the property. Um, there, the next thing you see there is the permitted use, and that's simply to point out that the public many warehouses do fall under the industrial category, um, warehousing and distribution, which is a permitted use in that LIC district, as I mentioned. Um, and I've just included the development standards. Uh, these are some considerations, maybe in, in areas where it's going to abut to a residential district or something of that nature. But the vast majority of, of, of the districts out there are already commercial, whether they are the LIC that run on the south or the general business district, which encompasses the majority of East Mansfield Street. So it would be a pretty straightforward. They would just have to you know, abide by these development standards and wouldn't be much consideration as far as distances from residential districts or, or anything of that nature. And I've included the other development standards as it relates to offsite impacts and exterior development. But a use of this kind where, you know, it's simply a private storage unit. People are coming to drop something off and leaving. So there's not really, I, I don't foresee there being a, a disturbance any greater than what's already there. Um, we're except, essentially, we're just extending a, a, an existing use. Um, Steve could maybe talk to more about his plans in general, but if you have any specific questions related to the zoning change, I'm happy to answer them. Would you like to introduce him? Yeah, this is Steve Eversall. He's from Stowaway Inc. Tell me that. Good evening. Steve Eversall. I'm one of the owners of Stowaway. My partner and I, Rick Richards, uh, owned the facilities. We've been here since 1988, and we've uh, had our occupancy full. We're trying to expand a little bit, and we were able to purchase truck parallel or lock the street on back to it from the JR next door. And once we found out, then once we landed that we are not zoned correctly, even though we've been in since 88. And so we, we went through, actually we're not informing lot two that we were through planning and zoning last week. The BZA got approval for the lot, made it conforming now too, because it was before that. And since we did have to be an LIC zoning, we're asking for consideration of that part. It is continuous to it, so it be the spot zoning with it. Our traffic flow is very minimal, you know, maybe four to six trips a day through there. So it's back off the road, it's not taking up your frontage of that part. But with those points, we're asking for consideration and approval of the rezoning. Does anybody have any questions? So we're to the point now where we're uh, ready to request draft legislation and set a hearing date. That's the last page in your packet. This is our timeline for uh, uh, to uh, consider legislation. Uh, we need, I think Todd, you said about a week for the... We need uh, three days uh, by the ORC. We usually need about a week to uh, send out the letters to the within 220 yards. 200 feet. 200 feet, I'm sorry. And then uh, draft the legislation. So that is three days in a week that would put us right square on the holidays. Yes, yes sir. Merry um, Christmas. And then, of course, we have the new council coming in. The first regular meeting of the year is January 7th. So to get a couple meetings under under the, under the for them, we're looking at probably about Monday, the 13th of January. Probably the first convenient day as far as our schedule is concerned. Does that uh, pose a problem? No, that's that not that a problem for us. Do it any work? We're going to Lynn here. Um, we've hired Lynn to do all the stormwater design development. The corn just come off in the last week. I spoke with him this evening, and he took those on and started stormwater design. So that would not be a problem. Okay, I'm going to make a motion. 
motion that we request draft legislation instead of public hearing for, uh, well, for... What time on Monday, January 3rd? For whatever's amendable to you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, you're the last one. January 13th. Four thirty-five in the afternoon. Four thirty or five? Is that well, he. Uh, uh, I'm. I'm later than that. That's what I'm saying. What, okay. what works for you, Bruce? Like six. Six o'clock. Okay. That's fine with me. Well, you know, don't have to worry about Monica after the first year. Sorry. <laughs> so, six o'clock. Seven. Yeah. Fine. And it can always be amended if something comes up that if that doesn't work. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll make a second. But for we that. have to. We do have to have it all in yeah. place. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we will. Um, I don't need the motion for this. I see draft legislation and okay. schedule the public Second. Meeting. Okay. Uh, if there is no other discussion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion pass. Okay. Monday the 13th at 6 o'clock. We'll see them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for investing in Besides. Thanks, Lance. Thank you. All right, if there is nothing else, I'll adjourn at 641. I will call the Finance Committee to order at 6.41 p.m. We have the codified ordinance 129.011, the service safety director residency. Mayor? Mayor? Yeah, thank you. Um, attached are the notes from the Finance Committee in July where I, uh, I had requested that we uh, widen the residency requirement. I gave you some reasons. Um, the position at uh, our service director is kind of uh, developed into as, as a much more complicated uh, position than it, than it has been in the past. We're dealing with um, uh, state agencies uh, that we weren't dealing with before. They're much more complicated. Um, in addition to that, um, in order to save the city taxpayers uh, money, we uh, consolidated several department head positions. We have not replaced three department head positions. Um, and uh, some of the burden of those department heads uh, that they were taking on themselves have now on our safety service director. Um, if, if we have to go out and find a service director, um, I would, uh, you know, would like to be able to, uh, in my administration, I would speak for future administrations, to be able to pull from a much wider, uh, it's not going to be, uh, for me it wouldn't be, you know, find your best buddy in town or somebody that's retired and may, you know, be trying to learn the job. Uh, we want have somebody that actually has some experience with dealing with agencies, with engineers, and with uh, a staff of 100 people. We don't find those people uh, in every other place. We've been fortunate uh, that we found Mr. Wagner, and he's uh, had many skills he brought to the job, but he'll be the first one to tell you that um, it's there's no training for some of these things. So uh, I would like to suggest that we could go out at least to the, the limit that we do for that our police and fire that are really similarly specialized in their, um, in their uh, experiences and in their qualifications. Uh, but if we could go out farther than that, I would, I would suggest we could go 50 or 60 miles. If we, if we, could, if we could do that at least initially uh, and then try to you know, have them come into a little closer range if possible. I think if we at least if we have to at least go to the Columbus area, which is about 60 miles away, and uh, so I, I would strongly encourage us to do that for this position. And think of this position now as uh, probably your, your most critical position in the community. 
see actually, uh, besides the one directors, of course. Or the others. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Good. Uh, and kind of you, you folks too, of course. Too, but uh, yeah, we, you know, it's, uh, I think it's in the best interest of the city that uh, the next service director, whether it's in, uh, six months or six years or 20 years, uh, you know, that at least has some experience with all those things. And I would I strongly consider even a wider range than what we have now, which is three miles. Kevin? Um, I'll go on the record with saying that I agree with the, you know, making that commensurate with the police and fire chiefs. I don't know, the 60 miles kind of, or 50 miles kind of scares me a little bit. I still want somebody that's going to feel vested in our community. When you, when you look at our police chief or fire chief that live outside the city limits, you know, they still participate in other things here in the community. And I, I fear going that far away may, may be a little too much separation. But the question I have for you is, can you think of an example where after hours the service director would need to be here in person? Is it something that has happened, or you know, we've always talked about if this happened, well, not, I mean, if we, you, need, you need either your mayor or your service yeah, director. I guess where I'm getting at with, with the question yeah. is, is, if somebody lived within 15 or 20 minutes of here, mm -hmm. is there a reason that, that something bad that, that you can foresee happening that that would be problematic, that they they couldn't get here sooner? No, I, I don't think And I mean, I guess there's that. nothing that says that, no, if, if you lived in town, maybe you happen to be in Walmart and back by the dog food, your phone doesn't work back there. <laughs> and it's going to be 20 minutes until you get up to the front counter anyway. So, I mean, uh, you know, I look at it like that, 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 you know, we're allowing it for the... We have people in the department that are replaced are responsible, the police chief, the fire chief, obviously, and, and the uh, you know, water department and, and sewer and so on and so forth, wastewater. Uh, so, you know, they, those folks are all uh, within a reasonable distance, too. So. Uh, so there would be enough people that we get. I don't think there's a situation where that would be an issue. That's that's what I'm thinking. Uh, thanks. I think that uh, one of the things that uh, maybe some of the people aren't aware of the fact that is elected officials. Any elected official is required to be within the city limit. Uh, that's that's part of the the, the whole election thing. Andrew Ward. Um, pardon me. Andrew Ward. Yes, and you're within, and so those are. Uh, and, and for specific reasons that are like that. The, uh, uh, you know, something countywide, you know, we look at uh, a lot of the uh, CEOs and things, and, and it's changed over the years. I mean, the Michael family, the Shunk family, they all lived here. But uh, the CEOs from our big, bigger businesses, uh, some of them live uh, as far away as Cincinnati and uh, run a business here in town. And uh, Cincinnati and Arizona, I think, was the last thing I saw posted about it. But uh, uh, so th this is, uh, and we allow our police officers, our safety forces are within a certain area. And I think that uh, if we, uh, we keep within Crawford County, we're talking about the county's not that big a, big a place that uh, whoever it is couldn't be available fairly quickly. That's one, one viewpoint. The other, I think the more important viewpoint is. Um, as you're searching for a talent to replace, to, to have somebody qualified, I think you need, you know, you need to be able to go out to a wider, wider geographic range. I think and both you know, of those are linked yeah. together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Chair, Ms. Chairman? Go ahead. Um, Kurt Fankhauser, 1675 South Sudeski. Maybe Rob can, uh, Test to this, but isn't there in the Ohio Revised Code a provision already for a six month window for a service director that's living outside of what our set radius is that they have six months to move into our whatever our I, I, I thought I've seen that's that. our code, yeah, that's, 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 that's our code, code. Yeah. yeah, our code, yeah. I, I, maybe it, maybe our code mirrors the state code as well. No, it doesn't. We're not aware of any ORC on service on service directors. Could be, but I'm not aware of that. With that six month window in there, that would give us the opportunity to fulfill that if somebody's, you know, we're in a situation where we need to go outside of that radius to get a safety service director and then. I would think within that six month window there, then council could figure out how, what, 
to accommodate that person. So what are you doing if, uh, if, it's, if we recruit somebody from Cleveland and, uh, and, and either we're recruiting a, a lady and her husband has a good job in Cleveland and they decide to move to Mansfield or, 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 or they live in Columbus and so they're going to move to Delaware. He's going to drive to Cyrus and she's going to drive back to Columbus. You know, I, if you've got two incomes and typically and two typically uh, careers in each family and I, I don't think that would work. It, it is six months of us wait by local ordinance. So we can set a local ordinance and we can say, and we have the opportunity to set, you know, we want him to be in the county, which is reasonable. Uh, I, I believe, I think I sort of agree with Kevin that right now, I don't know that 60 miles, but you know, we just had a uh, thing the other uh, night on a housing study here in, in town. And uh, where are the most of the new houses being built? A lot of them are not being built within the city limits. They're being built out uh, outside the city limits. So, uh, you know, for, to find some housing that you're looking for, you may have to go outside the city limits to do it. And uh, to say within the county, to me, seems more than reasonable to... Uh, could, excuse me. Yes. Madam President, Madam Chair. Um, I would, if we could really encompass, uh, you know, without the, outside the county, I think would be more beneficial. If we could, if we could go, you know, I'd like to at least get to Delaware and Mansfield get 30 miles. How far is does Delaware? Delaware is about 42 miles. 40, yeah. Well, that's, that's by road. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. But by correct by Corella, it's a or, 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 or at least, you know, you, you can do contiguous counties. Would you consider that? Oh, contiguous counties? Property and contiguous. So that would be Seneca, uh, Richland, Mary, Morrow, Kira. Yeah. Dan. My biggest complaint is the service director sets the water rates. He should live where the water rates are set. When he uh, secondly, secondly, uh, this wasn't an issue until the service director wanted to move to Sulphur Springs. Uh, we cannot change laws for people here. It's just, it's not moral, it's not ethical, it's stupid. So take that for what it's worth. I'm against it 100%. So I'm done talking. It's moral, ethical, or political. And it's, it's not it's, political. It's, 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 it's none of the above. It's, it's a fact, Mr. Wireball, that the things that I mentioned, um, first of all, right now, the, the service director is not required to live in town. Our own ordinance says that. So. There's no, there, there's 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 no basis to what you said. It's, it's, it's I don't understand your comments at all. I'm just telling you as I laid this groundwork in July, I talked about it, and I also talked about it in tonight. This is a different job than what it was five years ago. What Jeff do before he started this job? What Jeff do before he started that job? He was a head background retail. Okay. But it's taken him, he'll be the first to admit that if you taken him. He did. He earned his job. Years. He does a good job. Sandy? <coughs> I just was uh, wondering what is the actual mileage or radius on the police and fire? I, is, is it 30 miles? The chiefs are 20. I wasn't sure it was 20 or 30. We have a firefighter that lived up in uh, Castilia. No. Castilia. Well, firefighter, I'm sorry, the chief, so. I think it's 30. I don't know the house. And Tracy, do you know? On the, for the chief, so. Chief. For the top officers, it's 20. Top well, it's probably 20. Is that right, Mr. Rattler? I believe it so, is. I don't have a copy of the contracts in front of me. But let me ask you, if, if we take it to 20, and then if we would, um, if we would find, and we have to interview for this job in the future, and we would find somebody, but they would be willing to move to, you know, because of spousal situations, possibly we can consider it the next time, you know, 
if we get the right person. So 20 gives us a much, 20 to the 30 gives us a much wider range of where we can pull some people that have some abilities. So. You got a Mm -hmm. All the discussion was going on. I wanted to do some research myself about what Mr. Fankhauser said. And, uh, this is uh, about uh, city uh, or uh, Zanesville City Council met um, August 13th of 2018 and created an ordinance which introduced and waived the city residency requirement for their soon to be safety director that lived in Stark County. And it says, according to Ohio Revised Code Section 737.01, each city must have a public service director operated by a, operated, operator by a director appointed by the mayor. Um, it says that the director is required to be a resident of the city within six months of assuming the position unless the requirement is waived by ordinance. So it can be done, yes. But that's Ohio Revised Code Section 737.01 that says that within six months of assuming the position unless the requirement is waived. So it is in the Ohio Revised Code. Andy? And to a point made earlier, I, you know, sometimes situations bring up a reason to look at a law and decide whether it's still a good law to have on the books or not. You know, we've had that plenty of different occasions. You know, the fact that uh, Mr. Wagner might uh, like to choose to live in a different area, uh, is just you know, as, as a reason for us having a look at this there's not a, there's not a problem with that we have the, the right within the the rules to to make the change if if we deem it a reasonable change and i think long term i don't think it's a problem to look at a talent pool wider than three miles outside of the city limits for a position that's not an elected official so uh, you know what you determine that radius to be it sounds like there's not really a specific you know you can only go so far you know boundary to that but uh you know, i don't know if i'd go 60 miles but uh that that i think is the bigger question is uh, is how far out do you go uh, if you're going out but uh I, I, and mm -hmm. I think one of the points that this, uh, what the, these kind of rules do is that when a uh, county engineer uh, position came up, there was actually only one person that lived in Crawford County that was even eligible for the job. One person. So, you know, it, it, when you're in a rural county like we are, you know, it's a lot different if you're in Columbus or even if you're in Marion or Mansfield where you have a bigger population, and we're not a college town. We don't have uh, th those type of people with those backgrounds in our community, generally. So I think that uh, what this is like, uh, 1.4 miles further out than what the three mile limit is to get to, to, get, to get to Sulphur Springs. So- uh, And we're hoping to deliver water to Sulphur Springs. Yes, we are. To <laughs> I like the 20 mile right there, Justin. Not my committee, but I like the 20. I, and I, I get that we brought up Mr. Wagner's name. I'm sorry, Mrs. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I get that we brought up Mr. Wagner's name, but to me it's really not about who's in the, the position. I think it's better to look at it objectively from anybody who could sit in that position. And to the mayor's point, yeah, it does help to broaden your search area, not so much to find that person, but to find that person willing to move closer so I understand that like I like I mentioned I think that the 50 or 60 miles is a little bit of a stretch uh, I want somebody that's going to be a little more invested you know, in the community living locally even contiguous county to me is, is is a bit far on some of the far outreach corners of it I, I think because the police chief and fire chief are at 20 I would consider 20 to be a fair likewise number but People that are opponents or proponents of this both have good good cases. Darn if we do, darn if we don't here. I kind of feel more darn if we don't though because you're limiting your resources. So what you're looking for is a motion then to uh, request legislation bring before full council. At what? 
That's for you to decide, not me. No, I'm just saying. Whoever wants to make the motion. Well, finance. You're not on finance. No, I'm not. Finance members? Said on the um, the meeting from July 18th that um, the residency requirement within 20 miles of the city limits to match the city police and fire chiefs. So that says 20 miles. But your other option would be to keep it and then, you know, then, then we're going to have to, you know, if we have a change there, we will, be, we will have to hire back most likely as, as uh, department heads. So you're looking at a several hundred thousand dollar change there. So it's. Well, in reviewing the notes, I made the motion back in July. I think all seven of us have the right to, to get a chance to vote on that. So I'll make a motion to send it on the full council for a vote. To the 20 miles? To 20 miles, yeah. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Opposed? Opposed? Aye. <laughs> okay. You don't have anything from the uh, uh, auditor. Uh, New software, she's still getting that, okay, and uh, so she doesn't have those those changes available. So she'll be bringing that back to council at the next meeting, and because uh, we, we do have a quite a few year-end things that we are going to be required to do. I, I do have another question um, in regards to our Monday budget meeting. Do we, and I don't know if this question might be an easy choice in there. Do we will we have that available to have the weekend to peruse over? Are you ready? Is it? Put together. Yeah. If, if you, yeah. If you I mean, I, I, I feel comfortable to have the weekend to sit and look through it rather than coming into a meeting and bam, here it is. Okay. My so my can, conversation today was that if the blue papers that you're used to getting, you were not those. Correct. The auditor cannot produce those right. yet. She is still still working at that. But there will be a uh, uh, that they yeah. some so changes, changes that they have like changes that like, that like that 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 Yeah. Yeah. I'd like I'd like to at least have that as well. As we, we can notify you when those are available. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, there's no need to print all that. Yeah. We'll, we'll send an email copy out there. Yeah, we will notify everybody when those are available. Does everybody want that or just the finance? Everyone wants it? Everyone wants it? Okay, we can do that. Okay, number four, public participation. None. Can I have a motion to adjourn the joint regular committee meeting? Second. We will return at 7.03 p.m.